Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is sand your cup, just as you would before you started any other glitter cup. I am using a 220 sanding block, and the cup was previously sanded uh, before the taping of this video. Um, you do wanna pay special attention to the top and bottom. Um, then I'm gonna wipe the cup down with some acetone. Um, if you have issues right now finding acetone, uh, you can just simply wash with soapy water. Next, I'm going to take some painter's tape and I am going to mask off right down the center of the cup. Um, I do use the little um, seal on the bottom of the cup as kind of a guide um, for the middle. And this line will eventually become where the silver flake um, goes. I do use Nicole Moret Original um, Spirit, High Key Spirits. Then I'm going to take the cup outside and spray paint one half of the cup white. Okay so, the first okay, so once you've spray painted that side of the cup white, you are going to take your painter's tape again. I do believe this is one inch um, painter's tape. It's the Ace brand. Um, you're going to start at the top of the cup and you're going to line up the edge of the painter's tape for your first stripe, which will be red. Then you're going to get a second piece and you're going to apply it directly under the first piece of painter's tape. I have left the um, original piece of painter's tape that separated the other half of the cup on. You will see why in just a second. But essentially you're just going to put lines of painter's tape, one directly under the other until you reach the bottom of the cup. I do leave the bottom completely white. So the last stripe on the cup will be white and that will just carry on over the bottom lip of the cup. Unfortunately, this leaves essentially 12 stripes instead of the traditional 13 on an American flag. Um, I have tried narrower painter's tape. It just does not look as bold um, as the one inch tape does. You're, you could by all means change that out if you'd like or paint the bottom red um, to potentially signify the 13th stripe on the flag but this is what it looks like. And then you're just going to pull every other piece of tape off. So the top one being the first red stripe. So you're gonna pull every red stripe off. Leaving the painter's tape to cover what will later be the white stripe of the flag. And you'll see here, I forgot to tape the bottom to cover the last white stripe on the bottom. So I'm just gonna reuse a piece of this tape and cover up the bottom portion before I pull my last red stripe off. So now you're going to go outside and spray 
the red stripes. Okay, so now that you have painted your red stripes, you're going to take an X-Acto knife and along the edge of the original piece of tape that separated the two sides, you just wanna make a cut because um, you are gonna wanna leave the painter's tape over the white stripes, but you do want to remove that original piece of painter's tape, which you'll see me doing here. Um, the reason being is we're gonna paint the other half of this cup blue and that line um, essentially would stay stainless if we did not move it over before we did that. Um, I do like to spray paint all portions of the cup before applying glitter. I have had spray paint um, get up underneath the tape and bleed into my glitter before. So I do like to spray paint everything before applying any glitter. So you're going to see me retape here and I am going to put it right along on the on the side of the stripes now on the other side of that line. <clears throat> And you know, if you get a little off here, it's not really gonna matter in the grand scheme of things. The lines um, going vertically down the cup do end up getting covered with the silver foil anyways. So if you did make a mistake on this part, it's not gonna be the end of the world because um, you can always cover that up later. Um, the most important lines are going to be the red and white because those will be visible. Um, so you want them to be as crisp as possible. And then you're just going to want to put a little piece of tape to cover that last bit of white on the bottom of the cup. <clears throat> You definitely don't want blue overspray on the white section. And then I do take a piece of paper here. Um, and I kind of tear it to the size of the back of the red and white stripe side to cover it so that I don't get overspray um, into my red. I have <clears throat> done that in the past and it will show up underneath your red glitter. So I just cover it and put a little piece of painter's tape on either side. So now it's ready to go outside and have the blue side spray painted. Don't forget the bottom. Okay, so once that's dry, I left all the paper masking on there. I have not removed it. Now I'm gonna take 3M Super 77 Adhesive Spray. <clears throat> you could use the epoxy method for this. You could leave it exactly how it is set up right there. You know, put a little bit of epoxy on and put your glitter on. Um, this dries really quick so I can, you know, move on pretty quickly to the next section. So now I'm gonna take some clear sealer, spray that. Um, I do do two coats. You're not gonna see that in the video, but you do need it hard to the touch. So you don't want any blue glitter flaking off. Um, you don't want that to mix in your red and white. 
Um, so once you do get a hard seal on your glitter, whether that takes you two coats, three coats, um, then you can pull off um, your masking. Um, it doesn't really matter with the red and the white. If the um, clear sealer is a little bit wet still when you pull the tape, it does matter with the blue. You just don't want the residual blue on that tape to flake off um, into your red and white because it, it will stick in there and it will show up under those two colors because it is the darker. I do always glitter my darkest color and work to my lightest. So now you're going to see that the blue is glittered and dry and I'm going to remask over the edge of that blue line. I'm going to cover the bottom, which is white because I am going to start glittering the red here. You'll see I don't push the tape really into the glitter. I mean, you're not trying to get it to stick. I do push it right along the edge that touches the red, but I don't push the back side of the tape down. Um, I'm just trying to simply cover it so that when I spray the next layer of adhesive for the red glitter, um, I'm protecting the blue essentially. So um, you don't necessarily need to push it really hard. I do just run my finger along the edge there, but I'm not pushing the back side of the tape down. And then I'm going to reuse that same piece of paper to cover the blue side now. Okay. And I'm going to take my adhesive spray and I'm going to go back outside and I'm going to spray to do the red glitter now. Okay. So now you can go ahead and pull that off the blue. And go seal your red. You definitely want your red to be sealed well as, as you did with the blue because um, you don't want that red glitter getting in the white. I did when that sealer dried. Um, apparently did not record when I thought it was supposed to. I did pull the tape that was covering the white. And now what I'm doing here is I'm taping over the red glitter. Well, I'm going to tape the side of the blue again, and then you're going to see me tape over the red to cover the red and the blue so that we can go spray adhesive for the white stripes. Like I said, you could do your stripes with the epoxy method as well. Um, I do not like waiting four to six hours for that layer of epoxy to dry before I can move on to the next. The adhesive spray does dry rather quickly. Um, that will vary, I'm sure, based on the kind of adhesive spray you are using. I've heard Loctite does take a little bit longer. Um, 
this typically dries rather quickly. My house is set to 72 degrees and I do have a space heater that runs in here anytime I'm working on cups. So it is pretty warm in my craft room. Okay, so now I am taking tape and I'm covering the red. Once again, I'm not pushing the tape into it. You can see I literally pushed one end and then the, the last part of it um, down, but I'm not pressing it into the red stripe by any means. Um, it is pretty stable once you've put two coats of clear sealer, but, you know, I'm not trying to make it easier for it to pull up any of that sealed glitter when you take that tape off. So it's simply to just cover it so that the adhesive doesn't get into the red glitter. You know, typically I can do one of these cups in a day. Um, I am working from home right now, so this took me a little bit longer to finish this tutorial. So. Okay, so once again, you're going to want to cover the back of that blue side with a piece of paper. A lot of people I've seen use saran wrap. That works as well. Um, I have a whole bunch of scrap paper. My kid colors on paper almost every day. So I have an abundance of paper to use. So that's what's easiest for me. Okay, so now you're gonna go back outside and you are going to spray the white sections with your adhesive spray. You do wanna make sure if any little pieces of red or blue are stuck in your white that you get those off. Now, before you spray the adhesive, they will show through your white glitter. And put your white glitter on. Okay, now you can go ahead and pull off all that masking. Um, all your glittering is done at this point. It does only require one coat of glitter since the base coat's matched. As you can see, the tape comes off really easily. Nothing's getting stuck or hung up in that glitter. Okay, so now you're gonna wanna go outside um, and seal your white glitter really well. And then once that's dry and sealed, your next step will be to epoxy your first layer. So once you've got that, you can start with your stars on the blue side. Um, I googled American flag stars and traced them 
in my Silhouette Studio. Um, I do not have a Cricut. I do not use Design Space, so I don't know what the easiest way for you to do that part of this cup will be. Um, and then I do apply them in sections. Um, they're about 0.6 of an inch. Each star, sorry. So, and I start along one of the straight sides of the blue and work my way around the cup and then down using a towel just so my cup doesn't roll around on my hardwood table. I'm pulling off the little half stars that cut on the bottom. I did sand the cup gently before this. Um, all of the glitters used are fine glitters. So um, one coat of epoxy um, returned a smooth result for the most part. Um, there were a few rough spots along the edge that I did knock down a little bit. Um, you do just want to be mindful that there is one coat, so you don't want to sand too harshly um, and take off some of that glitter or color in your glitter. If... Sorry, it's a bit out of frame here. And then along this edge, I do just apply the stars individually and it will overlap that line. You do just wanna line them up with the pattern of stars here. And then I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and just cut along the edge and remove that extra piece of vinyl on the other side of the line. And like I said, if it's not perfect, it does not matter because that section is going to be covered by gold foil. I just don't like the bulk of the vinyl underneath the foil if it doesn't have to be there. And then I am going to take a few stars and place them on the bottom as well. Again, trying to line up with the pattern as it rolls over to the bottom of the cup. And I did not like the placement of these, so I end up pulling them off and redoing them. And then that bottom star will overlap and I'm going to do the same thing as I did on the side with the X-Acto knife and just cut off the excess that overlaps into the white. And next you are going to be ready to apply your silver foil. I am using High Key Spirits from Nicole Moret Original. I do apply this with Mod Podge. It is the only time I will use Mod Podge on this cup. 
Um, it seems to be the easiest way for me to apply foil. And they'll just gonna dab it along the um, the line there. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. In fact, the the more messy this is, um, the better it ends up looking in the end, in my opinion. But I just take a piece of tweezers and dab it on with my finger. It is kind of a messy process. You're gonna have foil stuck to your finger. It's gonna stick to your tweezers and it will be all over your workspace. So I highly advise doing the foil in an area that you don't care about getting foil all over. Anybody that's worked with foil before um, knows that it sticks to everything and it kind of floats around the workspace. So just be aware. I don't really have any rhyme or reason for like how wide or how narrow this part is. It kind of varies in each spot. That'll definitely be up to your personal preference. You can also use the gold flake for this, which is high key um, holy, I believe, is the gold. It also looks really pretty on the flag. And this tutorial is very similar to the tutorial for my other American flag cup. Um, both of these are my best selling cups. So um, I have a few variations of the design. I also have a blue top with vertical stripes going down about halfway through the cup. Um, it's the same process. Um, but instead of having the gold flake on there, the lines are exposed. You do need to be mindful of that when you are placing your lines with your tape so that they are crisp. Okay. So now I'm almost done with the second side here.
I do keep a towel nearby and you can't really see it in the video, but I do keep wiping my tweezers on it, even my finger. Um, any little bit of residual glue, as soon as you touch that gold foil, it will pull it up on your finger. So you do want to make sure like as you tap that foil down that you wipe your finger off as well as the tweezers. Um, so a paper towel or, or a, you know, a craft towel is handy in this process. My kid had to come say hi. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna let that Mod Podge dry and then I seal that with a clear sealer and then it is ready for epoxy. Um, you can add any decals you want. Um, I applied my decals after the sealant over my foil had dried and then applied the last layer of epoxy. Um, this video is taken before the final uh, layer was applied just so you could see what the finished product was going to look like. So I hope that helps you guys with your flag cups. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments and I will answer them as they come. Thanks.